Hello and welcome to the 46th video in this series of programming a chess engine in C. So last video we looked at a game tree with min-max and this video I'm going to, with a deep breath, try and explain very superficially how the alpha-beta algorithm works. I'm going to use in a, tr a game tree in this example that uses part of a tree presented by someone else, a video I found on YouTube, by a professor Peter Abiel. I think the name's correct, from UC Berkeley, and I'm going to put the link to his video in the information section for this video because I don't like using uh, other people's work without giving them credit for it, but the numbers are quite convenient that he's got in his tree to explain how this works. But like I said, I'm going to gloss over this really because you can look in his video for real detail because I want to get to the code at the end and also not have a 30-minute video. So, imagine we've got this game tree here. So we've got white, black, white, black. And remember that white is always trying to maximize the score and black, the circles, is trying to minimize the score. So if we walk through this tree in a min-max fashion, we would make this move, make this move, make this move, and score a four. And remember this is white trying to get the highest score, so we'd make this move and we'd have a six in here. And then black's trying to get the least, white the most, would have a nine, black would have the choice between a six and a nine, would end up with a six in here, and so on. And eventually would have all the numbers filled in the tree, like this, resulting in a value of 6 for the score for the position for white, and all of the nodes evaluated in the tree. But let's have a look at how we might think of this tree as a human. And it would actually end up like this, because say we were thinking three moves deep. We would say, OK, I make this, <coughs> excuse me, I make this move as white, black would make this move, and then I would make this move as white, score a 4, but I could make this move white, and score a 6. OK, so black's move there ends up with a 6. OK. Then I would make, black could make this move though, and you'd say, OK, but I can reply as white and get a 7. And then you'd say, well OK, then black isn't going to make this move, because he can go down another path which gets him a 6, and he wants to minimize the score. So you wouldn't even bother looking at the node that was here. And then you'd come back and say, what if I make the other move available to me? Well, if I make that, then black makes his move here, and then I can score a 1, and with my other move, at best, a 2. So black has an option of scoring a 2, and you'd already say here as white, OK, I can forget all the rest of the other nodes in this tree, because black can at least force me to have a position that scores a 2, but I know from this other move here I can get a position that scores a 6. And this is a human natural way of thinking, where you exclude moves because you see straight away that your opponent can uh, cause your position to be worse. And this is exactly the way that alpha-beta also works. It basically replaces this human thinking using a bound for the, ma the player that's maximizing the score, called alpha, and another bound for a player that's trying to minimize the score called beta. So if you look at the way that things start, the first thing you do is white is trying to maximize the score, so his current value for the position is minus, and we'll say minus infinity, that's two zeros to represent an infinity. And we have alpha as minus infinity and beta as minus infinity. And now we're going to walk down through the tree and you'll find it's surprisingly similar to how you think about it as a human. So as we walk down through the tree, we set black as plus infinity, because that's his worst possible score. He's trying to minimize the score. And now back onto white, and his score is now the worst possible score here of minus infinity. And alpha and beta are minus infinity and plus infinity. Remember, alpha is the best score in this path, back to the root move, for the maximizer and beta for the minimizer. So at the moment, they're the worst possible scores for both. And now we get the evaluation, as we've seen, of the 4 here, which means that white has scored a 4. So he's no longer at minus infinity, he's now got a 4, at least for this position. And that's also better than the alpha that was sent into this position. So now he can look at this second position with alpha as 4. Well, this move improves on alpha and improves on the value here, so we get the value of 6 for this position which means that the minimizer, black, now has 
a 6 here and his boundary for his minimum score was infinite. So now Black can take a look at this side of the tree knowing that his best minimum score, beta, is 6. So Black now comes into this second tree here with a best minimum score of 6 and now it's white to move and he makes his first move and evaluates that as a 7. Well, this move that white has is better than the best minimum score that black has, i.e. the value at this node for white is already bigger than beta and this is what's known as a beta cutoff. It means essentially that black isn't going to choose this direction the same as you would do in human thinking because the value that the maximizer has is bigger than the best option for the minimizer. So there's no point in evaluating this node here. And that's simply how the bounds, boundaries work. So you leave this node out. Then we go back up the tree and now instead of minus infinity here we now have a 6 because that's now for the maximizer white his best score. So now we go in the other direction and we know that white has got at least a 6 in his pocket because if he makes this move he's got a 6. So now we fall down the tree and set black here's best score uh, to infinity so his worst case scenario and white to minus infinity and now we evaluate our 1 which doesn't improve our alpha value and sets our node to 1 and then we go down to this one then and this sets our node to 2. Well what happens is then we go further back up in the tree and we now find that the minimizer, so black, now has a score of 2 which would set black's beta up here, sorry here, when he goes down into this side of the tree to a 2. Well, beta has gone less than alpha, so the minimizer has an option here to get below the maximizer. So this is also a cutoff, and therefore we know that we don't need to search any of the rest of the moves because white won't choose this path because black has the option of setting his minimal score below white's maximal score. So you end up choosing this move. And the ultimate effect is, is that these nodes as well, just as with the human are then ignored in this way. So I hope that makes some sense. Like I said, that's a very glossed over view of exactly how it works, but it's actually quite simple or for me to visualize because it basically does exactly the same as a thought process you would have as a human by simply not looking at the move because you already know that either the maximizer or the minimizer have a better option. In terms of code, it's a little bit different because Alpha beta is done in the negamax fashion. In this tree here we had essentially two separate functions. We had the max function like in the previous video and the min function here except they had the alpha and the betas passed in as well. But we have to do this in negamax fashion and the code, Suedo code, looks essentially like this. You call alpha beta with the remaining depth. You set the move score always to minus infinity the score is from the side point of view, as in min max, in negamax, and basically you flip, as in negamax, for exactly the same reason. The score with a minus sign, and you also then have to, of course, flip the two bounds, and negative the bounds as well. And that then enables essentially on each node, with the bounds flipped, each person to be uh, a maximizer, which is then the same as the negamax, but using the two bounds. And then what you see is, I'd say, is after taking the move, if the move score is greater than equal to beta, then we have the beta cutoff, like in the example with the tree. And if it's greater than alpha, then we improve alpha, just as we did in the tree. And if we don't get a beta cutoff, then we return alpha. Okay, so that's it for this video. Like I said, I'll post the link to the excellent alpha beta example video I found on YouTube. And in the next video, we'll start implementing our thinking algorithms. So thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.